Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series and in today's episode we're going to be continuing on with cascade and creating particle effects for use inside of the engine. So if you take a quick look at my scene here you can see I've got a basic little particle emitter, um, just a little spark uh, emitter and that's built up of sprites and these sprites are essentially just going to spawn loads and loads of these little images with a material on it and then we can control, you know, how these are spawned, you know, we can set things like velocity, size, color over life, collision, lighting, there's a whole bunch of cool particle effects that I want to show you inside of Cascade. But hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll be able to create something similar to what I've got in the background. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and show you in the level exactly what it looks like. Um, so you can see I've got the, the little, you know, these little dots basically being spawned in the scene. There's a little light and then they just have a little bit of velocity, it chucks them into the air and because we have gravity and everything set up, it's going to pull it down, there's a slight little bounce and then they disappear. It looks kind of cool, um, you know once you've done all of this you won't actually be limited to just creating spark particle effects, once you figure out all the modules you have a lot of freedom to go and create whatever you want really. Keep in mind I'm going to be doing a few more Cascade videos, um, so those are also going to help you, but for now let's show you how you can create your first um, sprite based emitter. You can have a whole bunch of different emitters, things like mesh emitters, um, but for now let's just focus on this. So. Hopefully you should know what a sprite is, it's essentially just a little uh, 3D plane, um, a plane being like flat um, and it's just going to have like a material on it. In this case it's going to be this material for me with a sort of uh, radial effect on it. It's a very simple material that I've created here and it can be used for most particle systems really. I'm going to be showing you how to create it. Um, you can see if we have a look at this, we've got the radial gradient exponential, we've got some multiply nodes and we've got particle color. And it's actually this particle color that drives the color of the particle effect. But anyway, so let's go ahead and create this new particle system. I advise that you create a new project for this, and not a new project, a new folder for this and then you store it all together. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and chuck it in here. So I need to do two things. The first thing I need to do is create the particle system, and the second thing I need to do is create the material that we're gonna use for it. So just right click anywhere in the content browser, create a new particle system, and I'm gonna call this Test Sparks for now. And then once I've done that, and I open it up, you can see I've got these little sprites being spawned here, um, you know, we've got 20 being spawned every second or whatever it is, um, and they just look like this. So let's create the material to replace this little crosshair looking thing and uh, get it some to something that we can work with. So just go ahead and create a new material. Just right click anywhere and chuck it in there. And I'm going to call this test uh, particle material. And then I'm going to open it up and we've got to do a few things. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the blend mode to translucent so we can get rid of the edges and make it look really nice and we're also going to make change the shading model to unlit. If we press apply nothing should happen we need to go ahead and create a, uh, add a few nodes in here. So for now we're just going to be working with opacity and emissive color. So the opacity is just going to get rid of the edges you know the sort of alpha effect and the emissive color is just going to make it shine nice and bright. So what we need to do is, first things first, get that circular shape in there. So we're going to use a node called Radial Gradient Exponential. Now I'm not going to play around with any of the settings, I'm just going to leave it exactly how it is. And the second thing I'm going to do is uh, add in a particle color node, and this is essentially going to allow us to drive the color of the particle system, of the material, directly from the cascade editor. So when we play around with things like color over life, it's going to change the material here. So now we need to just hook this up. I'm going to create two multiply nodes for this uh, so we can get it all working. So first things first, I'm going to chuck uh, the RGB from the particle color to get the color into A in this one and hook that straight up into emissive color. And I also need to multiply that by the gradial, uh, radial gradient exponential to uh, you know give it the shape that we want. 
It's, you know, if we didn't have that in there, it would just be a flat color the whole way around. We want this gradial exponential, just give it that shape that we want. And now we've got to do the same thing with opacity so we can actually get rid of the edges and have that circular shape. So I'm going to hook up A into the alpha of the particle color. And then once again, we're going to get the shape and hook it up into B. And once it, you know, uh, renders it out here, you can see we've now got that circular shape. If we put it onto a flat plane, just by pressing the little button here, you're going to see it works a little bit better. I don't know what's going on with my preview, but it should be working perfectly fine for you. There you have put it on the box, you can see it there. Anyway, so that's pretty much all we need to do with our material. We don't need to worry about uh, world position offset or refraction for now. So let's just leave that and go back into our test sparks material uh, particle system. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to just change the material. To change the material, just go over to the required part and then where it says material, find the one you just created in your content browser. For me, that's going to be test particle material and I'm just going to chuck it in there. You can either drop it down and choose it from there or you can just press the use selected asset from content browse button. Once we've done that, you're going to see it sort of looks like smoke now because we've got our um, you know, our grey circular shapes. And if we were to actually drag this into the scene, our little test sparks, uh, and we go ahead and press play or we press simulate, you're going to see that it looks a bit like smoke now. So we need to play around with a few things. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to spawn some more of these and we also need to change the size. So let's work on that first. So I'm going to open it up again and I'm going to go to spawn and I'm just going to increase this number to something like 50. And you can see we've got a lot more of them being spawned now. And if we go over to initial size, we can also change the size. At the moment they're a bit too big to be sparks. Sparks are usually quite small. And from here, you can see I've got values for minimum and maximum. So what I'm going to do is set the maximum value for uh, the maximum value for size to 5 and then the minimum value is going to be 3. And you can see they're getting a little bit smaller now. So if I go ahead and save that and then check it out in the content browser here, if I just end the, uh, in the viewport, you can see it's getting smaller and it's starting to look similar to the effect that I created previously. So what else is there to do? The next thing I'm going to do is change the velocity. And this is essentially just going to allow us to uh, change the direction that these are spawning because at the moment it's just going up and up and up and we don't necessarily need that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the value uh, on this. So you can see that I need to change, uh, make these particles actually go off to the left or to the right, whatever. But for me, I know that's going to be on the X axis. So I'm going to change this up and I'm going to change this to something like 300 and 100 for the maximum and the minimum. And you can sort of see they're flying off in one direction now. No puns intended, but that's sort of what we want. We can play around with the other settings we wanted to for Y and Z, um, but for now, that should be perfectly fine. So if we go ahead and check it out now, if I press play, you can see they're flying off to the side, but they're not going down. So that's what we need to set up next. And that's also quite simple. So let's go ahead and do that. We can use something called constant acceleration to actually um, give it like a constant force of acceleration. In this case, it's going to be sort of like a gravity effect. So we're just going to push it down. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go to acceleration and then constant acceleration, open it up and then where it says uh, Z, I'm pretty sure that's what we need to change. If we set this nice and high, something like 900, you can see it's chucking it up in the air. But because we want it to go down, we're going to set it to minus 900. And you can see it's now falling to the ground. So if I go ahead and close that, get the particle system here, raise it up a little bit, press play, you can see they're now falling to the ground. It's, it's very similar to the uh, system that we've got here. So hopefully, now that we're doing this, you sort of start, start to understand how we can play around with these different modules to create these kind of effects and create it however you want and once you know exactly what you want the direction you want it to go the size you want it to go and all of that stuff you can just dive in and play around with it and do whatever you want really so the next thing we need to do is give it a bit of color to actually make it look a bit more like sparks 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the color over life. And what this is going to do is just change the material over the life of the emitter. Now, if you remember previously in the material, we used the particle color node. This is essentially what the color over life module is going to be attached to. So we can play around with these values. So let's go ahead and do this. Also, if you haven't done already, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the lifetime of these little emitters so they last longer than just one second. So uh, you can see at the moment they're just like fading off after a second. Instead, I'm just going to set the maximum value to 3 and the minimum value to 2 so you can see they're falling and falling and falling and they keep going for a while. We are going to set up collision that kills them off, um, but for now we're just going to leave it like this and let's get into color. So the one that we really want to work with is color over life and we're going to get this onto the curve editor so that we can play around with the uh, values for uh, red, green and blue. And if you remembered and if you haven't seen the last video, I advise that you go ahead and do so so you can check out exactly how the curve editor works. But for now, let's go ahead and chuck something in. So first things first, I'm going to add the color over life onto the curve editor. It's really simple, just press the little green button on the color over life module, get it in, and then I'm just going to go ahead and press the fit button to get this stuff here. And now you can see I've got my start value and I've also got my end value. Now I'm going to try and avoid using the values um, in the details panel. It's a lot better to work with the curve editor where you have like a visual representation and you can play around with the um, you know values like straight away. So let's just go ahead and change it. If you wanted to, you could always control click uh, to add an additional point on the curve editor. But for now, I'm just going to work with start and end. And the end for this is going to be one second. So if I go ahead and click some of these points, I can drag them and move them around and I can change the color. So if we go ahead and try and add some red, because you know sparks are usually red, well they're already orange anyway, we're going to push the red up to give it a bit of color. But you can see that because, uh, you know, it's only at one, it's not going to ha have much red into it. We're going to use, we're going to change the value here to actually kind of increase that a little bit. So you can see at the moment it's 1.1. If we want sort of like a really bright red, we're going to change it some to something like 50. There you go. And you can see it's really coming to life now. And if we go ahead and press the fit button again, you can see the other values are all really low down. And we can play around with these as well. So just move them up. If you want to give it a bit more of an orangey color, you turn down the uh, the blue, give it a bit more green, uh, and boom, there you go. So I'm going to leave that nice and low. And at the end, if you wanted it to fade up, sorry, and if you wanted it to fade off into a different color, like for me, I might want it to fade off into like a white or a blue or something like that. I'll just change the end va uh, end value here, and that's really simple too. All I've got to do is just drag it off and play around with it, the same as we did before. So if I want to have more blue at the end, after about a second, you're going to see it starts fading to that nice blue. And just like that, it should work. So you can see the sparks are really starting to come to life here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this once again, and we're going to take a look at it in the scene. So I'm going to press play, and I'm going to chuck it in here. And let's have a look what we've got. We've got some nice little sparks. It looks really good. Um, there isn't too many of them at the moment. If you want them to be really cool, you know, you might want to spawn a few more of them. So feel free to tweak any of these settings on the go to just, you know, make whatever you want. But I'm going to go to spawn and I'm going to change it from 50 to 100. And it's going to spawn a whole bunch more and it's going to look really nice. If you wanted to, you could change the initial velocity and you could make them spread around a little bit. Just play around with the values, it is as simple as that. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. You can see I've got loads of these little emitters being spawned now. Um, I would advise that you try and be a little bit careful with the emitters. Don't try to spawn too many as it, you know, it's really going to hit the performance. You can see it's starting to slow down a little bit for me, um, but you know, just be careful. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up the collision and I'm also going to show you how to make these, you know, light up the world like it is here. So let's go and do that. Um, 
I'm also going to be showing you some of these settings over and over again as we create other types of particle systems. Um, but once you get it into your head and you figure out exactly what we're doing, you know, you can have a bit more freedom. So let's open up the test box again and we're going to add in a collision module. And this collision module is just going to allow us to control what happens when the, uh, these little sprite emitters collide with an object, whether that's the floor or the player or anything like that. So let's right click, go to collision, open it up, and we've got a few settings here. It does start to look a little bit com uh, complicated here, but I'm just going to go to the main important settings for you. So the main important settings then is going to be max collisions. Um, you know, if you want to save on the performance, you don't want too many collisions, uh, or if you just want it to make a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer, you're going to want to have that at a sort of mid low range number. If you've got a hundred particles. Um, you know, obviously you're not going to want all of them to collide. You probably only want to want like 50, not even that, like 20 of them to collide. So let's go ahead and do that. Go to max collisions, distribution, open it up and uh, just change this. At the moment, it's just a percentage. So if you wanted it to be 10%, you change that to 0 0.1 or if it's 50%, you change it to 0 0.5. So I'm just going to set the minimum and maximum both to 0 0.5. And hopefully, in a second, uh, it should collide. If it doesn't, I'll show you exactly why it doesn't. So you can see they're still going through the ground. That's because we need to set up damping, um, which is basically the transfer of energy when it collides with an object. So we just got to set that up. So if we go up to damping factor, we can just change this down here to something like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, uh, and hopefully it should have a little bit of a bounce to it now. Okay, it's not working at the moment. Let's just go ahead and play around with the values a little bit more. Just give it some more overall bounce. So over here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. There you go, and press play. Still not bouncing, so we've so we've got to figure out exactly why it's doing that. Let's just go back into it. And if we have a look down, scroll down, so we've got max collisions, that's all settings. And at the moment, I've just got that as free. So let's have a look. And press play. So you can see they're actually starting to bounce now. So we just need to make sure that we increase the number of max collisions and just chuck it up, up and up until we get what we want. So here we go. If we just go ahead and change this to 10, so it's not working at a percentage like I initially thought it was, so just keep that in mind. And now if we change it to 10, um, it should look quite nice. There you go, you can see we've got loads of them bouncing. Anyway, that is pretty much everything for this tutorial. Um, hopefully now you have a little bit more freedom in what you can create with Cascade. You get a better understanding of how it works. Um, so having said that, play around with your little spark emitter play around with some of the settings, make it do all kinds of funky stuff, create your own particles, do whatever you need to do. That is everything. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.